so, um, but I know that the more we speak to them, they're really interested in potentially doing stuff like this. But I haven't heard of other, no. other uh, health trusts that are doing some of this work. Okay. Have you ever worked with minicab drivers uh, in terms of getting them to turn their engines off? Because, you know, the, you're probably aware, one of the, um, I think it was Val Shawcross, wrote a, a letter to the press recently talking about too many minicabs in yeah. London, insufficient work for them, yeah. and all they do is pull up in residential streets. Yeah. And as you mentioned, people get cold, they turn the engines on and idle. And mm -hmm. certainly in the Greenwich area, I would perceive that as a problem. Do you have any plans to work so in that area? So, part of the Cleaner Air Action Days, um, we spoke to a lot of taxi drivers. Generally, they were okay. If, but what well, they were really resistant to us asking to turn an if they were in like, I forgot what it's called, you know where they're all sitting in a line together? A rank. A rank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> because their view was, well, we're going to move in a minute, mm. and that might not be the case, they might be sitting there for a long time, but they didn't want to turn their engine if they thought they I'm not talking about move. black cab drivers yeah. in a rank, I'm talking about the cab drivers who yeah. mm. mm. don't really have yeah. a rank or anything yeah. like that. All they do is park where they, they can. Yeah. Well, we... Um, <coughs> some of, like Addison Lee was one of the Addison Lee drivers was some of the people that we spoke to and actually mm -hmm. took the pledge on the day and they were fine about it um, I and mean, we haven't done anything more than what we did really on the clean air action day where we worked with um, we know basically spoke to everybody anyone we saw we spoke to them but um, Ruth Coldwood who's at the City of London who's our main uh, partner there She's really a strong advocate that we should all be going out and doing this anyway. Like, you know, when we walk down the street, you should not, if you see someone idle, you should just ask them to turn their engine off. And you've got to be kind of brave, but actually, most people are quite receptive. If you say it with a smile, you say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, it's a, the air pollution's really bad today, would you mind turning your engine off? Most people will either do it or they might ignore you, but they're not normally any more, they're not normally aggressive. I wish I'd have told the bus driver this morning at London yeah. Bridge. Because maybe London Transport themselves are the ones to get yeah. to for that well, one. Well, the thing is, bus drivers, they're meant, to, they're meant to have no idling policy. I know Norman Baker, when he was Minister mm. for Transport, used to tell the drivers to turn their engines off. <coughs> <laughs> Which the legal situation with idling, is it New York City? There's no idling signs everywhere. I don't actually know what idling yeah. was. It's like first visit in New York. So what's, what's the situation legally here? Well, what? I think legally, in certain boroughs, you can be fined. But I'm not sure people know that. You know, I think there's been a few press stories about it, yeah. but I think most people are quite unaware. And unless they are told and approached, yeah. I don't think it'll have that much impact. I mean, it's good that it's illegal, but I yeah. think people need to be more aware of that. I think. It's only illegal, it's only a like, borough by law level, there's no... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the, the challenges we face is that <coughs> we can get everybody to stop idling ever, but with the growth in traffic, um, generally, it's uh, a losing battle, and we've still got the issue of the emissions when people are driving. Uh, and I, I'm wondering whether there's as much you've done, Caroline, to engage with, for example, City Hall. I mean, Nottingham is a city where the bus fleet, you know, got a huge part in, in contributing to pollution in London, but the bus fleet in Nottingham is entirely electric, so I understand it, and not polluting. I know that Boris started to look at this and has got a prototype yeah. that he's looking at as a bus that has zero emissions. Yeah. I wonder if there's any advice you're giving to sort of more mm -hmm. or engaging with those um, big um, We haven't really things. yet, but yeah. we do intend to. I mean, these are pilots that we are just kind of developed and developing, so we're really looking at the next stage. And I think we're really keen to emphasise that this isn't what, we don't think this is the solution to everything, but it's yeah. as long as you're going to have, as long as we currently have diesel vehicles on the road, they should definitely have their engines off when they're not moving. I mean, that's just the simplest thing. Yes. Um, but it is just one thing on a, you know, on a I mean, scale of things. If it was up to me, all the vehicles, well, you can yeah. probably pedestrianise London, but if you yeah. can't, you know, at least all the vehicles would be zero emission. Exactly. You know, and I think it's just that Pushing kind of journey. That's the answer, yeah. is to push us so that we have cleaner vehicles, I yeah. think, is the key thing. And so any accreditation schemes that you can look into around that, I think, are, you know, they're, they're so critical, you know. Yeah. So, so it's sort of been until we sort that out, you know. Has anyone heard anything more about the idea of diesel scrappage scheme? Um, that that got flag, flagged up at some point, suggesting that they might do they might do yeah. a scrappage scheme for people who bought diesel cars 
that includes my mum actually, while they were being parked is better for the environment because you use, that, use less fuel and now it turns out there's particulates and there's all of these people yeah. stuck with cars they can't afford to get rid of by, them, by themselves, which they essentially want all government advice. Some of it's not a couple of years ago, I don't remember right, but it's, it, it, it sort of was around for a bit a couple of years ago and then disappeared off the agenda. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm an ex-homeless person, and I found when I was sleeping with a lot of the people who were sleeping with me, they were building fires to keep themselves warm, because nobody was going around to give them a sleeping bag or anything like that, or any blankets. Well, that could have done a lot. And I, I went to France just as far as off chance. I went to St. Vanessa Song. And I found it difficult to bring in something terrible. Because I'm afraid of it. But it scared me, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Caroline. Yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry, I have to leave. Okay.